On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we continue bringing my 2002 Saab 95 Arrow back to life. But I, I made a mistake. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo. Before we get into this, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot about the tornadoes across the Midwest. Uh, I don't know of anything that happened in Kansas at all, but then again, I don't watch the news. I do know that Bowling Green, where Holly is, like a lot of it got leveled. So uh, if you guys are worried about anybody, it's not me, I'm fine, uh, all my family's fine. Nothing around here at all, but Kentucky, is in a lot of trouble right now. So if there's anyone that does need your support, it's those guys. I did check in uh, on all my friends. We've got some people from Wichita that work for Holly here and have moved there and stuff like that. I've heard from all of them. I know everybody's fine, but that town is, uh, it's, it's definitely hurting right now. So I made a mistake on the Saab, and that mistake was a lot of you were saying in the comments, replace the cabin air filter, replace the, and I've got a cabin air filter, of course, it's, it's right there. And I was like, yeah, obviously I'm gonna replace the cabin air filter. Well, it turns out that whole glove box removal and all of those pieces that I had out to do the blend doors. Well, everybody was saying that because it's behind the glove box. I figured it would be in the engine bay or have a slide out tray or something like that. Now the cabin air filter is screwed in behind all of that stuff. So I get to take those panels back out today. And today we're also gonna do the Jalousi. We're gonna do the shortcut for the Jalousi. If you do it the factory way, I think, I don't have the book, but I have seen a guide on it once and the uh, guide said it would take uh, multiple hours and you have to disassemble the entire console. Basically, most of the interior comes out of the car to do the Jalousi the factory way. We're gonna do it the non-factory way and probably the way you wanna do it. So let's get this thing off the lift and uh, I'll show you the Jalousi action here. Now there's really no fix for this. Uh, somebody put something on there and pushed through the plastic. This seems to be really common on almost all of these things. Um, to replace that, you would have to remove the shifter and pull the whole console out. And I mean, who knows? And also, I don't have a part for that because it's super hard to find that shifter surround there. Okay, we've got a trim tool here, and this should be all we need to pop off the surround. It's coming off. Just kind of get under the edge of it and then work around it. It's getting there. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now you can clearly see the ring of dirt from where that's been sitting forever. Uh, we are gonna put this thing in uh, neutral to do the next step, so sorry about the dinging. So to get this uh, next surround up, we're gonna take our same trim tool, pull back once this thing's in the notch there. I'm just kind of putting my hand all the way underneath it. Let's see, I think I've got a good grip. There it is. And pop these tabs out carefully. Uh, if you take your time, you should be able to do it. Yeah, just kind of like that. <laughs> uh, slowly working around it. I started, there we go. Okay, so we got them all now. Basically, we're just gonna kind of lift it up just this much and pull out the old Jalousi. I'm both, mostly, I wanted to say Jalousi a lot. Jalousi is the name for the, the actual name for the shifter cover here that keeps dirt out of the track basically and makes it look pretty. But without it, the car looks hideous. And this is a, a whole thing to get out here. Here's the little green strip that tells you what gear you're in. The light shines through the yellow part easily and that's how you know what gear you're actually in. And the green part is that nice green glow you get from the interior there. We just need to dig out what's left of the old Jalousi and we should be good to go. I've been taking my tiny little screwdriver turning every single piece sideways and then pulling it up and using the needle nose to reach in here and like grab it. And then I can get like a little grip on it, turn it sideways and pull it out of there. Time for a quick test. We're gonna slide this thing down in there and it does look like it goes all the way to the front, which is good. And then we're gonna cut this right there. So I've got some cutters right here. We can just use the needle nose I was already using. Just give it a little snip, boom. Okay, so nice cut that shouldn't change really too much of uh, how this thing behaves. Now that we've got this cut, uh, I need to install our green strip here. It rotates on there, so you put it on like that at a 90 degree angle and then turn it, and that should put them together, kind of keep them married. And then we have to squeeze this thing in here. So straight up and down on the shifter, somewhere right in that vicinity. 
probably drive. Work it around the shift column. Has those little rails for this to slide in. Uh, the front is those two little tabs that are sticking up there. This is uh, pretty tight, pretty tight in here. All right, there's one. Now for the light strip. So I think everything's good here. Let's go ahead and try to snap it back together. Maybe it snapped. I didn't even really notice. Boom! Now our trim ring goes back on. Looks good. Well, now it looks like a complete car instead of that gaping hole I had here before. If we shut off all the lights in here, we should see that park is illuminated with the kind of the white right now. And all the rest of this is green, but unfortunately, where that hole is, it's kind of worn through that plastic light strip there. You can see the difference in the strip, but hey, she's good to go. That looks a lot better. If you don't want to spend multiple hours on that job, that is the way. I would recommend having a vacuum handy if uh, if that thing breaks. Hopefully it doesn't, just be real careful taking out the old Jalousie. Uh, here's the part number, 4777173, and uh, it's a pretty quick job. As long as the other one doesn't fall apart on you, it ended up taking me quite a while to get all the little pieces out. So I took the wiper arms off the 9.5 like uh, two or three years ago so that we could paint them. And uh, today I grabbed them and wiped them down with some alcohol so there's a nice surface. Luckily there's not like tons of paint missing and where it is, it gradually transitions to missing all of the paint, which is a lot better than like splotchy paint. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit it with uh, our Duplicolor trim and bumper paint and that should take care of this problem. So let's get a little black paint slapped on here. Oh no. All right, it's getting better. Ooh, it says Saab LP in there. Okay, I think that one looks pretty covered. And we'll come back to it here in a few, put a second coat on it. And round two with our second wiper blade here. Right in the eyes. How is that even possible? So the wiper arms have been drying for a while and I think the finish looks amazing. Uh, that stuff didn't look like it was going on very well, but after drying, it looks great. So I'm gonna let those dry a little bit more. Luckily I've got the zip ties on here. So uh, the perfect hanging solution for them to sit here and dry. And uh, we can get back on the car. I think next up, we go after the cabin air filter. Problem after problem is getting solved today. I was gonna go to the cabin air filter next, but then I realized that this part was sitting over there. This is the intermittent wiper relay and the part number is right there. I'll throw it in the description below again. Um, when I would scan this thing, it would actually tell me there was a problem with the intermittent wiper relay. And a lot of times what happens with those things is they weld themselves together. So even if you don't have this relay, the wipers will still work, but I think they only function in high and low speed. So the relay controls all of the intermittent speeds and all of that. So uh, in here, this is the fuse box under the hood. I'm gonna pop the cover off of there and locate our relay and I, Took a look through here, there's one for rear wiper, which I don't have, rain sensor there, which is actually populated, and then front wiper there. I think this is the offender. So to get these relays out, you just pry back the safety. And once the safety's out of the way, you can wiggle the relay out. So there it is. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but I've heard that it probably failed internally. So to install our new one, uh, just line it up. The three pins go towards the engine in a row there. So it should be just about right there. And boom relay swapped out and this is a different part number i think it's an upgraded unit from the old bosch relay and uh, of course from esob parts and that should wrap up our wipers okay time to fix my mistake we get to hop back in here and pull everything out from under the dash and uh, change that cabin air filter so this comes out first then the glove box comes out and then we should be able to access the panel that's screwed in that has the filter in it behind all of that it's all the way back at the back Ah 
yes, every other car on the entire planet, 30 second cabin air filter change. Saab 9.5, nah. Transmission computer's right there, that has to drop, the glove box comes out, the kick panel under the dash comes out, that little hump comes out, and then of course you have to pull like 10 screws to get that cover off, and, and then you find this. Oh, what a disaster. So anyway, when you're putting this in, it goes in like that with the hump towards the front of the vehicle, airflow towards the seats. Uh, so I'm gonna get in there with a vacuum and try to get all this trash out of there before we press on. Also, that's interesting. That came out of there with the filter. But yeah, parking this thing under trees for a long time, always a recipe for disaster. Uh, that was before I had it and now I get to clean up the mess from uh, whoever did that. I just pulled a Harbor Freight quarter inch ratchet out of the cabin air filter enclosure. No joke, mind blown. I just shoved the whole vacuum in there and that's what came out. See if there's any other cool tools. All right, I don't think there's anything else and I got the whole car vacuumed out, so. Uh, time to install the new one. Well, you guys will have to visualize this one, but up at the top of that heater core box, it's really the evaporator box, there are two hard lines for the AC. And uh, there's a foam strip that comes with the filter and it goes around those lines. So what I did was just reach in there blind. It's already perfectly cut for those two lines. And uh, you open it up, take out the inserts, and then slide it around the line and then push it up to the top until it's flat. And uh, that helps stop the air from coming around the cabin air filter. And now we are ready to slide the filter back in. Um, you will, in the automatic, have to drop that transmission computer. There's two tabs at the back. Push down on the tabs, back on the tabs, and that computer should drop right out. So uh, we are ready to install the cabin air filter. Here's how you reinstall the transmission computer. Done. And uh, then put the glove box back and put all the covers back on, and this job's done. Uh, it does take a few minutes, and I guess it's probably worth your time if you find a quarter inch ratchet in there. This Saab is starting to look like a car. Everything's back together in there. Uh, I do need to fire this up and listen to what's left of those leaves blow around, but hopefully I got it all cleaned out for real. The Jalousie is looking right. The wiper arms are ready to go on. The relay has been swapped on the wipers. That is a lot of stuff in one day. And uh, I really think all there is to do is to keep doing. So let's, uh, let's listen to this thing here. Auto climate, here we come. Actually full fan. Full power. I heard one leaf blow around. There's a little piece right there. Looks like it's gonna knock. <laughs> oh. So that was vent up. Let's try vent down. Blend door motors are working. It's not running obviously, because uh, I just didn't want to start it, wait for it to heat up. Uh, defrost. Defrost button work? Grease arc works. How do you go to defrost? Oh, that's that's rear window defrost. <laughs> okay, so it should be switching up. There it goes. Now auto's going to work, nice. What's up? Checking stuff out? I heard these were made by people who made airplanes. I see the fastened seatbelt sign. I was hoping to see like a, a no smoking it, sign also. It should have a no smoking, but this was before those days, I think. Oh, back when smoking was healthy? Yep, smoking was still cool. Josh is over there playing drip the floor cleaner. And I am attaching the wipers. So the wipers on the Saab have this hardware. There's a rubber piece that is supposed to hide the uh, connection to the wiper arm there. So that sits on there like that. And then the wiper arm just drops on, of course, like they always do. Tighten the nut down and there's a plastic cap to uh, cover the whole thing up. A 17 millimeter tightens down the nuts on the wiper arms. Um, I didn't go crazy with the clocking or anything like that. I just put them about where I thought they looked like they were parked correctly. And now, if it's all clocked correctly, uh, we'll do a quick function test and it'll work perfectly. High speed wipers. Oh, perfect. Oh, it sure sprays. What about the other one? Spray the other one. There they go, all three. So cool as three sprayers. Okay. In just one day, I took this thing back to uh, almost being a complete car. 
I'm pretty happy about that. Ton of work and getting that cabin air filter knocked out ended up being a great deal. Wipers back on the car. Uh, honestly, I forgot what all we did. It just got a new battery too. The old battery was really struggling. I mean, this thing sat forever and it wasn't on a battery tender. So I'd say the battery cooked itself. So tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and keep working on it. A few more modifications. We're gonna do my first go at LED lighting on the thing um, because I never ran LED headlights or fog lights in anything. We've got some that I think are gonna be magical. So we're gonna swap those out. Keep trying to make the saw better and better. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjerogo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. We did so much work on this saw today. Um, it just kind of took all day while we were putting the holly on Josh's 33. So that's coming soon on his channel. It's actually on. It is on. It looks way better. It does. It's going to run way better too. <laughs> that's what's so, most important. Yeah. Uh, we have to wire the thing still. It's just kind of chilling on there. Connectors are all hanging out back there, but it's about to be done.